Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Sagrada, but not just Sagrada, but the expansions to Sagrada, Life and Passion. The game plays one to four players, or five to six with the expansion, takes about 30 to 45 minutes, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Sagrada, you are attempting to make a beautiful mosaic. You'll be taking one of these windowed boards and placing die based on appropriate spots and placement based on the choice of where you'd like to place place the die when utilizing these window cards. Sometimes you'll have to base them on shade, which is going to be the different numbers on here, or color, as opposed to the different spaces on here with different colors. And your objective is just to simply place them down and follow the rules. When you place dice, you have to make sure that no number corresponds with another adjacent number, and of course no color does the same. And of course when the game ends, which is basically at the end of the specific round, the 10th round here, that will trigger the end game and you'll score your victory points. With these expansions here, there's going to be a lot of additional things I'll talk about. I'll explain the very minimum of the base game, since I've covered this game before. Then we'll go into each of the expansions and talk about those, then my review, and we'll let you guys decide if you want to pick them up. The game Sagrada is a dice drafting game. You'll be taking a certain number of dice from a bag here, you'll be placing them into a bin, and then you're going to roll them and then players are gonna go back and forth drafting these die. Taking one, placing them into their window, and then passing this and having the next player take one and put it into their window. And you'll do this until the last die is left over. That die will go on the round marker and you'll go to the next round, up until the 10th round. And on the 10th round, you'll check your board and you'll see how many points you got. And whoever has the most points is the winner. What I want to talk about mainly is Life and Passion, the two new expansions that we have to uh, cover how the game kind of functions with these guys here. You're going to have the Life Expansion, which is going to come with 12 orange masterwork dies, the masterwork board, two new tool cards, it's going to come with some new window cards, as well as, of course, six public objectives. Well, everything in there is pretty much just added and shuffled into the base game, which will include new things like the public objectives and the tool cards, but there are some unique things, like the apprentice cards. Apprentice cards are added based on the new window cards, so when you're selecting one of these guys here, you'll be putting it into your board, and if it has these little uh, windowed pieces here, then you're going to be able to utilize the apprentice cards that you have here. You'll shuffle the deck up and you're going to deal out one card face up next to it, which will be the discard pile. And how it works is as you're drafting die back and forth, whenever you place a die in one of those windowed spots on your board, you'll get the choice of taking the top card of the discard pile or drawing two cards, picking one and putting a new one out on top of the discard pile. These cards are either going to be cards that can activate when face up in play as you choose to utilize them, or you can choose to discard them for an ability. So for instance, this one here says you gain a random tool card from the outside of the game and you may uh, pay to use it as normal and other players may use this tool, paying their favors instead to you though. And then the apprentice here, this one is increase or decrease the value of one die in your window and you must obey all placement restrictions. So you can increase the value of dice and make them worth more points at the end of the game and you have to discard that card. The other aspect to the life expansion is the masterwork board and dice. You will take each one of the dies and select the side based on the bottom of the board here and place the die corresponding with that onto there. If you're playing with just up to three players, you'll only use these six die. If you're playing with more, you'll add the extra six. And how this works is as you go back and forth drafting die, if you have a die and you do not want that die, you can instead discard it or place it on the masterwork uh, board. If you place it via its color, you can put it on the bottom row, or if you place it via its shade slash number, you'll put it on the top row. And based on where you can place it, whether it be number or color, you'll take the corresponding masterwork die and place it on your board, following limited restrictions. It has no number value, so you can place it on any number of value. It's basically a wild, but it does have a color, so you cannot place it on color spaces. And each of these are going to give you different points, five points, uh, it's going to give you different, it's going to give you the same points for different type of objectives. Uh, all of these arrows here are going to point to two different locations, and as long as those two locations have the same number value or uh, the same color value, you will score five points. If it ever faces off the board for some reason, you will score nothing. So you need to make sure that you are able to follow the rules uh, based on the die and based on where you place it. So if I place this die right here, I'll need this top portion here and this bottom portion here to be the same color 
and, or a number, and that will score me five points at the end of the game. However, if I were to place it something like this, where it's on the side of the board here, and one faces it outside of the board here, and one faces up here, I'm just gonna score zero points. So you only need to make sure where you place these guys. There are two other ones that follow uniquely distinct rules. These guys here are four different locations. One is going to be specifically for color value, and the other is specifically for number value. And that's basically the main aspects of the life expansion. The next thing is a passion expansion, which is going to come with mainly the glass die. So you're going to get these six rare glass boards, which are these guys here. And how it works is you're simply going to place one of these guys down. There's multiples of them and roll one of these die. And then when you roll it, you will then place it down in the middle section here. And for each number of players in the game, you'll have one of these white die out. And during your turn, you can spend these little tokens here that you're going to be getting in order to gain this die and place it on your board. They're considered wild, they do have a number of values, so you can place them on any colored space, and also they could have some unique advantages in the game. Another thing too uh, is you're going to be getting the inspiration cards. Inspiration cards are basically brand new abilities that you can utilize in the game. Sometimes maybe once a round, once a turn, uh, so once a turn, or once a game, or maybe uh, a certain number of times. Like this one here says once a round after drafting, you can spend one favor token, which are these tokens that you can use to get glass die or of course other tools, uh, to break a color or number restriction when placing a die. So you can kind of ignore the requirements when placing down on the board here. And so on and so forth. This one here is going to let me gain up to three favors from one tool at any point in the game. So as you place tool uh, favors down on these tool areas here to utilize the abilities, you'll be able to, hopefully with this card, gain favors back from either your own or your opponent's spaces. And then it's also going to be coming with uh, public objectives and private objectives. These are going to be glass objectives uh, in, in, in two different functions or formulas, but basically you'll just add them to your deck. And that's pretty much what you're going to come with. It's going to be the glass, it's going to be these cards here, uh, the inspiration cards, it's going to be uh, these cards here, the apprentice cards, and uh, it's going to be the masterwork. So masterwork, glass, inspiration, and apprentice. Those are the four main aspects to these specific game modes. And then of course they give you additional things that kind of correspond with them in the main base game, which is going to come in the form of tools and different objectives and private objectives, etc, etc. So, okay, now you understand the basics of the expansions, and hopefully you've come here watching the, this because you've seen or played Sagrada before, I'll just go into my review of the game. So for those of you who uh, haven't actually played Sagrada before, just know that it is a dice drafting game. It's one of those games where basically, depending on the number of players, there'll be a certain number of die in a pool, and you're gonna be placing them in here, and then each player in round order is going to select one of the die and place them down following rules. And the rules are, you can't have the same number next to the same number, you can't have the same color next to the same color, and you have to meet the requirements on the board that you select. So in this case here, we have reds over here, yellows here, this has to be a five, this has to be a four, this is a one, this is a six, and these spaces here will let you gain these uh, apprentice cards. And you're just simply gonna pick one and pass and pass and pass. And then when it goes all the way to the last player, that player gets two choices and then it's gonna come back around. So the first person who drafted will be the last person who drafted. Then it'll pass to the next player. They'll put out more dice, draft, 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 double draft, and then go back around. And the game ends after 10 rounds and hopefully you have a pretty esteemed board, a glass board here, and you'll check to see how you score. And you're gonna score via uh, all the rules here on these guys. And you're also gonna score based on the private objectives here. So this might be like, oh, for every specific number next to a glass die, I'll score uh, X value, which is equal to the number of numbers, as long as they're different colors. Or if you have the, the same colors in the two different sections of the board here, as long as they're in the same column, you will score points for those. Or two points for every exact die on your board that's the same color and number. Or whatever your lowest row is, as far as value goes in pips, you'll score that value. And uh, they've introduced, with the, one of the new expansions, the uh, Life Expansion, this Masterwork board, where you can score five points whenever you meet the criteria of these die here. And of course, they're a little bit more challenging, and they add a little bit more variety to the board here, but of course they are wild, so they might be a good spot to place one of these guys and worry about it later. Uh, and you're, yeah, basically just trying to score the most points you possibly can, utilizing glass die when appropriate, and of course being able to use your special unique uh, inspiration card when you need it the most. 
So, Sagrada is a wonderful game. This is a game that many people have played. Uh, this is a very, very popular game, and one of my wife's, if not my wife's, favorite game. Uh, she has played this countless times via the app online. There's this, like, I believe there's an app, and I believe there's also a, a Switch game that you can play this on, and it functions just like normal Sagrada does. But this here adds, when you have the board game, it adds all the expansions, and you're going to have the five, fifth and sixth player edition, which is going to let you use these little trackers here, to make the game faster, and there's a lot of variety to this game. Now, the first thing I'd say is with these two expansions, there is some limitations as to the type of combinations of these cards you want to have down, and it explains in the rulebook like what you don't want to have happen. You don't want to have uh, this, this thing asks for certain colors, and this thing asks for certain numbers, and you can't do both of them. So if you ever run into two objectives that kind of contradict each other, get rid of one of them and put a new one out. And it functions the same for my wife's game, actually, Moonshell, and there's some cases where they objectives that are added as expansions just don't work with other objectives and so you need to discard them. But otherwise, let's go into it. So I really like the Masterwork dice here. The Masterwork dice are really unique. You're going to be able to place them out if you do not like what you have in here. And in the original Sagrada, there's a lot of times where you're not going to be able to utilize dice based on the rules of placement. Because whenever you start placement, you have to always place adjacent to a die that you placed previously. So you have to be aware of that. Additionally, utilizing these is going to get you points later on in the game. It's not going to be something, it's not also going to be something that's a future worry, but at the present time, it's going to help you in placement, so you're not going to have to worry about placing something you do not want that will not benefit you. Uh, there's also a lot of variety as to where you can choose uh, from this pool to place die. Of course, with more players, it becomes more dice, but also more of a chance for them not to pop up. Uh, the next thing is this uh, glass die here. These are going to be wild dice, which are really nice to be able to place in certain spots that you might need them in. And they're also going to be guarantees to make you help progress your board in case you miss out on a die placement. These guys here are also going to have some unique ability on them. So for instance, I could choose for this one too, before placing this die and spending two of these points here in order to utilize them, I can roll a random die from the bag, and if its value matches the die, I can set the die to any value and return the random die to the bag. And also, so for instance, if I roll the three, and this was a three, I could turn this into a six and place it on my board. That's kind of like a wild, and white dice are really nice. And then, of course, when you place one white die out, you'll put a new white, you'll roll a new white die and place that one out onto the board here. Sometimes you're not going to want to change the number, but it's just a nice way to utilize this glass board, and all of them function in a different manner. And there are a total of six of them, and you're only going to need to use one in the game. I also really, really enjoy these cards here, these apprentice cards. These are going to basically be considered like tools that are going to allow you to um, gain either more victory points when you are achieving something, but it's not just specifically for one player. It's usually for the entire group, but there's some benefit for you to do it. Um, and you can co kind of keep these secrets. Some of them will give you favor tokens, which is what you can use for tools, as well as different die placement and different cards, different objectives that you can obtain. Just a nice way of adding a little bit extra to the game mode. Uh, adding in the objectives for the glass die is a nice twitch, twist, a nice touch to the game as well. It's a way in order for you to utilize the new components in the same function as the old game. All of these specific little expansion things are kind of added to the game, but they feel like they become part of it. The only thing that really changes in the game is it becomes easier to place die down on your board and guarantee a perfect grid. Now, of course, it's not always going to happen. It just, it helps progress that. And I think for the most part, that's actually a good thing. Most people want to have a full board. They don't want to feel like they missed out on rounds or turns. It's all about getting the most points and the most value for your placement, not necessarily that you just can't place because you get kind of screwed out on a dice. That was my one major problem with this game when I first played it. My wife has always loved this game, but when I first tried, tried playing this game, I really did enjoy it. But always being stuck with the last die, uh, the last two die, and both of them are completely unusable is so rough. With these new expansions, it adds the ability for you to discard those die and gather a new die that's going to benefit you later. Or it lets me spend uh, these points here in order to place a new die out so that now I have the ability to place the die that I previously couldn't place. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to win the game, but it allows everybody to have that opportunity to make sure your board is filled and you feel, you feel satisfied when you place these things down. 
The inspiration cards are nice too. They're all very useful. They have different functionality. Uh, I think it's just a nice little touch. It's like a, what, what I would add for any board game I would make if I wanted to do an expansion. Like, oh, here's an extra ability everybody can have at the beginning of the game that utilizes it in some way, shape, or form, whether it be during rounds or throughout the entire game. Nice touch. One of those things that you can choose to use or not use. And in fact, all of these have their own modules. If you look inside the rule book for life as well as passion, you can say, oh, okay, which modules do I want to play with? The apprentice mode? Okay, we can add that as well. Or I can do the masterwork module. Or if I want to play the passion expansion I can say oh okay let's see the inspiration module we can add that which is basically these cards here um, or I could do the rare glass module which is these guys here and so you can kind of mix and match any modules you want if you don't like one you can kind of take it out and if you do like one you can add it in or just play with all of it I actually played with all of it uh, I didn't have a problem playing with all of it there was not a lot of contradictions that I noticed and all the boards worked pretty well together in fact it was a really really fun game we scored very 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 close to each other Overall, the expansions are excellent. Uh, the quality of them is great. If you like the base game Sagrada, if you like the artwork for the base game Sagrada, this is just more of the same of that. It's going to be just the same quality and just as nice. Uh, everything's pretty well explained. Everything's pretty well understood. And each of the modules is easy to teach and explain after playing the base game. Would you be able to play all of this all together at the same time at the very beginning of the game without with new players? Uh, yeah, probably. But I think it'd be best to start with the base game. And then if you want, add each individual expansion to the mix. You can add both of their, their modules, but I would suggest going from one to the next expansion and adding it, and then the next expansion with both of them and adding them, and you'll get it. Because they're not like, you have to play with them even when they're on the board. You can choose to completely ignore them and just play the base game if you want, and that might not be a bad thing necessarily each and every time. All right, that's pretty much my explanation of the game and the rules. I don't think I have a whole lot of negatives to this. I think if you just like a new twist on it, and if you like the idea of being able to play some more dice on your board, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a little or less competitive because the only aspect to the game that involves you messing with people really is gonna be this, this here, and of course with the new added uh, inspiration cards that kind of changes the game a bit too as well as being able to mess with players or obtain certain things that they use or play but this is mainly still a solitaire style drafting game so it's all about the experience of do you want it to feel more challenging or do you want it to feel like you're more complete at the end if you do want to make make it so, so that you feel more complete then these are great expansions to add Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sagrada and the expansions Life and Passion. If you'd like to pick up any of these expansions or the base game, there will be a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our channel, like, comment, and subscribe. If you earned our, if we earned your subscription, if you earned ours, if we earned your subscription and you've watched more than one video, then I would greatly appreciate it if you went and clicked the uh, support us button, the subscribe button, and the notification button as well. We do live streams every Wednesday, today, and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Wednesday is on whatnot.com, where we sell games and show off games, talk about games. And on Sundays, we play on Twitch, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. All right, guys, if you like these, thank you so much, and I appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time as we go and delve into more games.